Creating the Raga guitar helped me learn that we're so comfortable in our own spot of the world. You know, if you live in a small town and you go to a big city, you're like, oh, this is so different, it's so weird. But it's still our own culture and it's comfortable in so many different ways that we're just not aware of until you go somewhere else where absolutely everything is different. And when you're put into that situation, you get more of a sense of what's going on around the globe outside of yourself. And I just, I try to carry that awareness um, that the world is really bigger than our little bubble. My name's Josh Humphrey, and I am a luthier. The story I tell with music is um, my sister, who's two years older, was learning piano, and I would like lay underneath the piano while she played and listen. And I just loved the sound of it, and it just seemed like a logic that made sense to me. I tried piano lessons, and I hated it, and I cried. Um, but when I was 14, I discovered the guitar. Um, I had played like trombone in school band, but guitar was it for me. And I got into um, indie rock and Seattle. I was in Seattle area, so grunge music, Nirvana, punk rock, and that was it for me. Took it up a notch in my senior year of high school, and I built a, a solid mahogany um, acoustic guitar, double cutaway. It was kind of a, a copy of the Gibson Melody Maker. When my friend told me he was going to college for music, I was like, you can go to college for music? Sign me up. I studied um, theory and composition. And yeah, it was just fantastic. I loved every minute of it. I was writing a lot of music for a string quartet and I was learning classical guitar. And after I graduated, I got into a master's program in Eugene, um, where I did a master of intermedia music technology. And it was basically electronic and acoustic music combined. I was like, this is my future, I'm gonna do this. But it, it was such a intense period, it, it kind of burnt me out. So that's actually what drove me to want to go back into the shop and start building acoustic guitars. My friend that, that was at Central and got me to come out there for a music program, he was really into Indian music, he loved it. And so after he graduated, he wanted to go on a trip to India and he lived there for two years. And he's like, why don't you come with me We'll travel around India for two months and then I'll stay you go back home. And I was like, sure, India, great. Um, was that eye-opening, you know, completely different culture. It feels like being on a different planet. The language is different, the customs are different, the way people walk and talk and move is different, the way you stand in line is different. Just absolutely everything is different from the ground up. And that's a really, really eye-opening and valuable experience for I think any human. I fell in love with the Indian culture and I got into Indian music myself. The music of India is very much based on melody. Where Western music we use a lot of chords and a chord is three or more notes at the same time. The melody in India is given such elaborate development and treatment. There's just way more scales and way more combinations given uh, than your typical sort of Western music. After a few years of building guitars, my friend Brandon, who studies and teaches Indian music, he found out that I was planning to move back up to Washington. He said, hey, um, we should design a guitar for playing Indian music. There are some guitars for Hindustani music that you lay down flat on your lap and you play it differently, but there's none designed to play like a normal guitar. So he proposed the idea and I went to work designing it. Yeah, built it basically, just designed and built it. So the concept is based on the idea of taking a normal guitar and then adding um, extra strings that are called sympathetic strings. This string vibrates and it causes these to vibrate like almost like an echo or reverb. So these are really important. And then the next set is these, which are called shikari strings. There's a Hindu temple that's uh, like a mile from where I grew up, and they have classrooms there, and they're very, very kind people, and they let me to use one of the rooms to teach. I have about 27 or 28 students in Sammamish, um, and they're all learning Indian music. All my life I've loved music and I've loved building things and I never knew how that would all 
work out as I pursued those interests. In some ways, it feels like a self-fulfilling prophecy of uh, your interests and your what you work hard at coming together um, and in a way that's completely unexpected, which I think is, has a beauty to it. And it's definitely not easy. Pursuing music and pursuing teaching are not the most lucrative careers, but just by staying true to what you're passionate about and by working hard at it, more importantly, working hard at it, you can find a path that maybe isn't obvious or you didn't even think existed. But just by being open to the possibility of, of inventing an instrument, learning how to play it, and then uh, teaching it al also is sort of a, a dream come true, really. Um, and, you know, if that's all I do for the rest of my life is learn to play and learn to teach and learn to build, keep learning to build Raga guitars better and better, that's, I'd be happy.